In a marketplace where adventure bikes seem to be getting bigger, heavier and more tech laden, it's good to see that there are still some options for a smaller, lower capacity, more basic adventure machine. The Sinis Terrain T380 is one of those and this comes in right at the budget end of the market and can be bought in the UK with a full set of aluminium luggage for less than £5,000. So what's it all about? To give the little Sinis T380 a fighting chance I've taken that luggage off. This bike produces 36 horsepower, I weigh over £200 before I put my kit on, add to that the weight of the luggage before you even put anything in the luggage it's going to be having a bit of a hard time so I've stripped it back, taken the luggage off for this part of the video it's a revy little motor but there's not a lot of punch to it and uh, I've noticed an issue well not an issue maybe but uh, there's a weird bit of gearing so third gear 47 miles now the jump into fourth gear doesn't really seem to make much difference the gear in from third to fourth it, it feels like it's the same gear anyway the gearbox has got a pretty decent action it's quite slick you do have to work the gearbox a little bit obviously with that limited amount of power you haven't got uh, a lot of torque so you are up and down the gearbox quite a lot but generally it's not too bad the ride quality itself isn't bad either it is a pretty basic suspension but it's quite plush one price you pay for that plushness is is a little bit bouncy obviously you have to take into account that it is built to a budget and whilst we're on that subject it's probably worth talking about the price of this bike just to put some context into everything that I'm talking about because you can buy this bike as I'm riding it now with the crash bars obviously without the rear luggage or the rear uh, carriers this bike will set you back on the road four thousand four hundred and ninety five pounds if you want to add the full set of aluminium luggage then the bike retails at four seven nine nine it's not the lightest aluminium luggage and it hasn't got the most sophisticated fitting system but it will do the job and it's got a capacity of 105 litres in total it's easy for me because I jump on and off of bikes all the time and I am lucky enough to get to ride some very nice bikes but just to put into context everything I'm thinking about with this bike and when I'm talking about it I shouldn't really be comparing it to those bikes that are costing 10, 12, 15,000 pounds you know the bike is what it is it is a Chinese made budget adventure motorcycle in terms of scale although the engine is quite small it's still a relatively well sized bike the seat height is 820 or 830 millimeters I can't remember I'll put that on the screen up there the whole bike itself weighs 200 kilos so it's not what you would call a light bike but it does give it an element of uh, weight and plantedness on the road in terms of spec as we looked at before there's not really anything in terms of rider modes you've got this LCD screen which is kind of posing as a TFT screen but it seems to be pretty clear it shows everything that I need on there temperature, odometer, trip, gear, revs, miles, fuel all of that's there, all of that's very easy to read but I say there's no riding modes, there's no rider aids in that sense other than ABS so it is a back to basics machine but there's not necessarily anything wrong with that there's less to go wrong and sometimes it's quite nice just to go back to basics and not have those to think about so it does look like a pretty decent full size machine obviously the styling cues are not lost the headlamp is pure GS and the styling here is very much Tiger 900 but with two incredibly popular bikes like that why would you not want to ape them and follow that styling it is a nice looking bike and as I've always found with Sinis bikes the finish isn't bad as well again it is built to a price point but it's quite nicely finished this sort of silver on here is all really nice okay there's a few shonky bits here with bolts and odd bits and pieces this bike's only done 1300 miles but the uh, exhaust system is already starting to corrode 
and that, that's not just surface rust some of the joints where it's welded are a bit splattery and the rust has taken hold in there already so longevity of things like that aren't doesn't look like it's going to be good but that could be easily resolved a bit of ACF 50 or something would keep that rust at bay the riding position is good the ergonomics are nice it's a very comfortable bike the, the seat's just a basic foam seat but actually it's pretty comfortable I've been riding on this for a few hours already today just to, to get a feel for it and uh, no problems with the seat it's nice and comfy the screen's pretty good as well and actually I'll be honest it, it's better than a lot of other adventure bikes that I've ridden in terms of protection it's not adjustable there's quite a lot of design work going in there it's sprung which I presume is just to to keep it solid but you can't move it up or down it is where it is but it doesn't obstruct your vision it does a pretty good job at pushing air around I'm not getting any buffeting around the helmet and the bike is is good fun to ride there's no denying that again I wouldn't push it too hard in the twisties because as we've seen on the Hyosun review I did recently and the other Sinis bikes this comes with Tim Sum tyres and I just I just can't tell what these tyres are doing they, with the block tread that you've got in these they're actually quite squirmy they're not giving me enough feedback off the road surface but that's easily remedied for somebody who wants to do a lot of mileage on this bike just pick yourself up a different set of aftermarket tyres and you'll be golden I was going to use the expression that the brakes are adequate but actually they're a bit better than that uh, uh, they surprised me you do have to pull a little bit hard on the lever but they, they do pull you up not too badly actually if I compare it to some of the smaller capacity machines I've ridden the Honda CB500X and the KTM 390 Adventure I've got much punchier engines 390s are roughly a similar size but it's got a lot more get up and go than this bike and it feels a lot more punchy the Honda's a slightly bigger capacity but again has got a bit more urgency to it I don't know what the reliability of these kind of motors is like over time but it feels like the sort of thing that will just keep chugging away and just keep going and it's not overly fragile the thing to remember about that of course is that uh, Sinis offer a three-year warranty in the first year that three-year warranty also includes all parts and labor for anything that goes wrong and roadside assistance right, which way are you going which way are you going boy you got no indicators on your Jaguar apart from that issue with the tires pretty predictable handling at 65 miles an hour they were at six and a half thousand revs red line is at eight on here so if you're doing motorway driving in sixth gear at 70 miles an hour you're going to be uh, working the engine quite hard a lot of the time let's see if we can get up to that speed down here There you go, 70 miles an hour and it's over 7,000 revs. It's not hideous, but it does mean that the engine's working hard and it's probably not going to do your MPG much good. But this bike I don't think is a massive motorway muncher. This is definitely a bike to go and find those back roads on and uh, take your time and enjoy the scenery. So for me, if you want to get into the world of adventure bikes and you want to buy a new bike and you haven't got a lot of money to spend or if you don't want to spend a lot of money then this is definitely a good way into the adventure bike world and actually it could be all that you ever need. Now it may be an inexpensive bike but it does come with a USB port and it comes with a 12 volt power supply a cigarette lighter style plug now the £13,900 Africa Twin that I've been riding doesn't have one of those as standard so there's a plus point for the Sinus <laughs> but to go on a trip and do some exploring this bike's got everything you could need really whilst I've stopped here one thing that I have noticed about this bike is that the side stand could probably do with being a little bit longer it's got a very unnerving amount of lean on it uh, but it does feel like that just could be a bit longer and when you've got the luggage on the back it's accentuated even more so probably another 
inch or half an inch on that would be good on uneven ground it's certainly something you've got to be aware of and also I noticed interestingly and I've been talking about riding two up on the warning here it says always wear a helmet of course operator only no passengers the addition of a passenger will adversely affect the ability of the operator to control the vehicle so there you go if you buy one of these according to the manufacturer don't take a pillion on this pillion seat having a quick walk around the bike it's actually a nice looking thing it comes in two colorways this red one's quite striking but overall it's a purposeful looking bike now I'm no off-roader I've got no real off-road skills so I'm not able to show you or to take this bike onto some really difficult terrain to show you how it handles but I suspect that it's not the sort of thing that that will be doing anyway but I do like to explore a few green lanes now it has been pretty wet recently so I don't know how muddy these places are which is why I've come to this by the way because it is graded so generally it's um, not too bad the standing position for this bike is not horrible either for me at 5 foot 10 I'd probably want to put some risers on because I'm leaning forward a little bit too much but it's not bad I think this is obviously where you notice the shortcomings from the suspension that bounciness does throw you around a little bit more it's not as plush as a a better system would be even that of something like the KTM 390 which is still a relatively basic is is damped much better than this the tires actually on the dirt probably feel better than they do on the road but yeah it's definitely uh, definitely a bouncy ride oh out of the way squirrel but it skips through here quite nicely I can see I'm not the first person to come through here today to get over that side because that other camera sticking down there but yeah no problems I've covered up pretty much all of the key points in here. Hopefully it was a useful video for you. If you've got any questions, then you know where to leave those in the comment section down below. If you'd like the video, a thumbs up is always appreciated. As is a subscription. If you haven't already, then hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell. It was at this exact point that the battery in my chin camera packed up just as I was wrapping up the video. So all I was going to say was until the next time, Thanks for watching, take care, ride safe, and I'll see you soon. Bye.